Hello everyone, welcome to GTechie. I hope you all are doing good. Today's topic is characteristics of remote sensing systems. Let's get into the topic. The first one is all about the energy source. We have classified the energy source into passive and active. Passive, that means the energy that is reflected or emitted from the Earth's surface. And active, it's con that is the control over the nature surface of the energy. A uniform spectral distribution of re reflected sunlight and self-emitted energy used to be in passive. And it has a non-uniform with respect to the various wavelength and their properties. In passive, there is a varying degrees of efficiency. Solar energy level vary with the time and location. Because passive is absolutely nature. It's all that's take energy from the sunlight only. It's a source is sun only. Then about the active. Calibration for the source characteristics are vary with the given time and location. Obviously. Here I gave a small example for the passive and active remote sensing with the effective understanding. Here, everyone is taking photograph of another woman in sunlight. That is passive. Once the moon comes, there is no light source. Obviously, moon has a light source, but it used to be dark, right? We will use the artificial light to take the photograph. That is for active. The same we have to apply for the remote sensing also. For passive, sun is the source. And for active, it will produce its own light and take the imageries. The next one is all about atmosphere. The atmosphere modifies the spectral distribution and the strength of the energy received or emitted. The effect of the atmospheric interaction varies with the wavelength associated. The sensors are used in the sensing application. And calibration is required to eliminate or compensate these atmospheric effects. Just look here, here the EMR source, electromagnetic radiation is a source and here scattering is happening, emission is there and absorption is there, everything just recorded by the satellite, that means sensor. The third one is about the energy matter interacts with the edge surface. In the way of remote sensing, the emitted energy and reflectance of the material is unique for each and every thing and the spectral signature plays an important role in analyzing, identifying and detecting the materials in the edge surface. And for the similar spectral signature, the differentiation becomes very difficult and the interaction of the edge surface feature might be elementary level or other. Basically, it's not at all existent. And compared to the MSSs, hyperspectral that may contain somewhat more details because it has 264 bands and have a spectral signature. Here I am 264 bands for Hyperion data. Then nowadays advanced sensors and tool handling might be reduced the atmosphere. The fourth one is sensor. That is a limitation for all the small objects in the edge surface. But it can seen by a sensor. Of course, our human eye can't that much extend, but sensor can too. The limitation is a resolution and it is derived into different types. In the field of remote sensing, they knew it has a four types. The single sensor are not sensitive to all the wavelengths. Here is a little example how the satellite is taking images in the land surface. So the images will be taken, it's a swath, path, everything will be there like that. Just a small example I included as an image. The fifth one is the data processing and the supply system. It includes hardware, time, experience, difference, data and some considerable. Few users are in need of immediate data after the acquisition by the sensor to make timely decisions such as the disaster management, crop monitoring, etc. Recently, we are facing a lot of uh, flood and cloud bursting. So many things are rough conditions. Users might need the immediate data to identify the damage and defect in the particular affected area. A few sources of remote sensing are unable to supply data over exact area and time spans that might be desired by data users. This is also a small example. This is not that much detail, excuse me for that. For the beginners who are learning, who are hearing for the first time, for those people I attached this image. Here the satellite is taking images and the data will be overlaid. Processes like that. The last but not least, it's all about multiple data uses. The success of any remote sensing emission lies on the user who ultimately transforms the data into the information. This is possible only if the thorough understanding of the problem by the user and has a wide knowledge in productive application of any remote sensing methodology and the users should know how to interpret the generated data and also the best ways to make use of them and more, more importantly single combination of a data question and analysis procedures will not satisfy the needs of all data users this is how the data users they are handling and interpreting the data i just include for the example 
I hope you like the video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and hit the bell icon. Bye bye.